consciousness is arguably the most amazing thing to exist within the universe. It has allowed us to become aware, to experience things, to understand we are alive. Before we obtained consciousness, you, me, everybody experienced an almost infinite stage of dark nothingness. So long it felt short. And then bam, you're alive, you're conscious. And some people call it turning on. It's easy to understand that we as individuals haven't always existed. Your consciousness was only allowed to become aware when it had a brain to create it, or a brain to inhabit. And though we have people all over the world debating what we will experience after we die, most of us don't discuss what we experienced before we were alive. So with that said, what did you experience? before you are alive? This is obviously a very deep question, so what I want to do is give you three different perspectives and allow you to be the judge. The first and arguably the most important perspective is the biological perspective, more specifically involving neurology. This perspective would specify that you experienced nothing at all prior to being alive. This is due to your consciousness being a result of chemical processes interacting with lobes within your brain. Without these processes, you do not exist at all biologically, implying that no brain, no you by any means. To take a much deeper look, your consciousness is made possible for the most part due to a sheet-like neuron structure known as the claustrum. Scientists often express how remarkable this structure is due to its ability to receive input from all areas of the cortex, as well as its ability to output information all throughout the cortex as well. Scientists also believe it synchronizes time throughout various parts of your brain, and this connection with the claustrum and consciousness was solidified in 2014. Remarkably, scientists at the University of Washington accidentally came across a phenomenon while they were trying to figure out what was causing seizures within a patient's brain. While using deep brain stimulation investigating said patient's brain, they placed a single electrode next to the claustrum, accidentally stimulating it. In turn, it actually caused the patient to start to lose awareness. In order to verify what was going on, scientists asked the patient to repeat a word while they stimulated the area. Instead of it actually just preventing the patient from speaking, which would imply something else, she slowly started repeating the word more and more quietly. She went on to be unable to respond to visual and auditory commands while seemingly still being awake. What's interesting is once they stopped stimulating the area, the woman immediately popped out of it, being completely unaware of what just happened. And while this finding has the potential to open up the door to a completely new understanding in terms of how consciousness and the brain are intertwined, it still begs the question whether the claustrum is the keystone to consciousness, or at the very least, various levels of awareness. But as of now, the evidence is leaning towards yes, meaning it is what makes you possible. So in respect to the video's question, this would suggest that you can't experience anything until the claustrum, the areas in your brain necessary for you to be conscious, develop. There is nothing beyond that. So that dark nothingness prior to turning on could be nothing more than your brain trying to make sense of it not existing prior to turning on. And that's where most people in academia would probably end the discussion. But let's go beyond just the facts and think a little. This leads to the pinnacle of some of the most intense questions in philosophy, leading into the philosophical perspective, the what if. So if consciousness is a byproduct of the brain, is your specific consciousness the only consciousness your brain could ever make? In a previous video I made, I raised the question if you were teleported to an area which would involve deconstructing your body, sending the entire blueprint of your body to a station and then reconstructing you out of material there, and then, for whatever reason, two blueprints were sent to two different stations which created two of you. If your specific consciousness is the only byproduct of your brain, how could you explain there being two of you, both having completely independent consciousnesses from each other, but with the same brain chemistry? Which one would have your specific conscious, if either of them? But now there are two individuals who share the same brain chemistry, morals, ideas, DNA, everything. 
but are two completely separate consciousnesses of the same exact brain chemistry. Could this mean that there are multiple potential consciousnesses experiencing the same life as you, but are just not alive yet? Is your specific consciousness that your brain has produced just chance, or are you the only consciousness that could have ever existed in your brain? Did both consciousnesses truly experience the same life before being alive? Is your brain just constantly making new consciousnesses with just the memories of the old ones? And yes, it can just keep on going and going. But if consciousness is not a physical byproduct of the brain, would this mean that out of those two bodies that were teleported, would one be unconscious and the other one would have your specific consciousness? So could this suggest that your consciousness already exists and it's just waiting for the right body to meet the perfect biological criteria to make you alive? That dark nothingness we all experience could potentially be kind of like a waiting room of some sort, just before you turned on, that is. And these are unbelievably fascinating questions. Questions we may never have the answers to, but questions that are fun to ask nonetheless. And with that, I want to give you one last perspective. It uses quantum physics to try to explain how the consciousness transcends space and time. Definitely not everybody's cup of tea, but still just kind of fun to think about. A man of the name Dr. David Hamilton brings up an interesting point talking about the interconnectedness of the universe. Talking about a phenomenon in quantum physics known as entanglement, a very real and observable phenomenon. To brief you on it, two electrons, for example, created together are entangled. This means that if you were to take both of them and put them on the total opposite ends of the universe, and you were to stimulate one, the other would react instantly as well. Instantly. Implying that information can travel infinitely fast, or they are still connected. They are entangled. Implying that everything in the universe is entangled, being that we were all entangled at one point, during the Big Bang. This means that space is potentially just a construct that makes an illusion that makes us perceive things are separate objects when they're not. So yes, all the jokes about how time is just an illusion, well, apparently space is an illusion too. Woo! Okay guys, you're gonna plug me from the Matrix now. So even though we tend to look at the macroscopic world for answers, maybe the true answers also lie in the microscopic. Hamilton brings up a classification of particles known as fermions. These are particles that must follow the Pauli exclusion principle, meaning that no fermion can ever be in the same exact location as another fermion. We humans have fermions all throughout us. It's what keeps us also from falling through the planet. It allows me to like touch the wall and not go through it. Hamilton brings up the idea that when a conscious being chooses to do something, you affect the fermions in your brain, implying that all of the fermions in the entire universe, all 10 to the 80th power, must take the fermions in your brain in consideration to not break the Pauli exclusion principle. The entire universe has to take what you do into account. If this is 100% legitimate and everything is truly connected. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes, your thoughts, your desires, everything is accounted for by the universe. Hamilton also goes on to discuss how recent studies in quantum physics have gone on to potentially suggest that entanglement is not just limited to space, but could also involve time saying that particles from the present are also smeared into the past and future, suggesting that our perception is just a part of the story and that all time is simultaneous. So the things you do today must have always been taken in account for. Because as suggested by Hamilton, the point of power is definitely in the present, and the present is everywhere and every when. So what would this imply that you experienced before you were alive? Well, you very well may have always been experiencing the universe, and the universe has always been experiencing you. So whether or not this perspective is true, it's still just fun. And maybe one day science itself will be able to explain all these questions, especially considering we are still discovering so much. So take the before life into consideration because we've all been there, and I'll let you be the judge to what exactly it was. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the episode. My question for you guys is, is what are your thoughts on the three perspectives? The fact, the think, and the beyond. And with all that said, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning, or thinking, in this case. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like, that would really help me out. And if you enjoy my content, please feel free to subscribe for the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed.